Well, let's follow up now with three members of Parliament joining me from the foyer of the House of Commons tonight. Sean Casey, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Uh, Michael Cooper was a Conservative representative on the Special Parliamentary Committee, in fact, one of its vice chairs. Murray Rankin was also a vice chair and the NDP representative on the committee. And uh, Mr. Casey, I should point out, was there for all the committee meetings. And, and let me start with you, Sean Casey. Uh, we will see the legislation tomorrow, but already uh, we're hearing it will not allow medically assisted death for mature minors. Let's start there, even though the Joint Parliamentary Committee recommended that. Uh, what is the government's reluctance to allow that? Well, we'll have to wait and, uh, and see what the bill says tomorrow. But, uh, I mean, at the committee, we heard a range of evidence on that topic. Uh, and you also have seen the dissenting report written by the elected Conservative members of right. the committee that I think fairly stated the, the, the points of concern that, uh, that were heard by the committee and that we're hearing in the public. It is contentious. Okay. Mr. Cooper, uh, as uh, Mr. Casey points out, uh, you are also against allowing this for uh, so-called mature minors. Um, as you know, critics of that approach uh, say it should not be based on, on age, but on the capacity to make competent decisions. Um, let me ask you why age is a, is a key factor and should be in this conversation. Well, the Supreme Court, in its pronouncement, determined that competent adult persons have a charter right to physician-assisted dying. The Supreme Court did not say competent person. If the Supreme Court wished to extend it to uh, minors, the Supreme Court would have said so. The Supreme Court didn't say that. So uh, I believe that any legislative response to the Carter decision needs to follow the uh, parameters set by the Supreme Court. All right. So if uh, there is no provision for so-called mature minors uh, to avail themselves of medically assisted uh, death, you are obviously in support of that. I would be in support of that provision. Okay. Mr. Rankin, uh, let, me, let me move to you. Um, let me ask you, what's your view on this, if it's confirmed tomorrow that so-called mature minors are prohibited from access to medically assisted death? Well, first of all, it's a very sensitive topic. All Canadians are taking position on it, as is appropriate. We had 60 witnesses, over 100 briefs, and our recommendations uh, were, of course, that, that uh, mature minors, after a few years of, of considered study, would be would be subject to it. That's where the evidence led the majority of members of the committee on that point. We'll be looking at the bill its an entirety. We'll be talking about it in caucus, and we'll come to a position on whether we can accept it once we've done so. We're also hearing the bill will, will not allow people suffering from a degenerative disease, uh, diseases that could erode competence over time, such as dementia, uh, Mr. Uh, Rankin, yeah. uh, that they would be excluded uh, from from this as well. Uh, where are you on that? I'm I'm where the committee majority was on that, Peter. I think that there is a need for people at that who have been diagnosed with that disease after they know that that's the inevitable result, that they're going to be in fact meeting the conditions that the Supreme Court said as grievous and irremedial condition dementia is. I'm thinking of Mrs. B Ms. Bennett, who uh, took her life perhaps prematurely because uh, she would have wanted to have had the ability to use an advanced directive. We heard very sensitive testimony on that. I agreed with the majority of the committee on that particular point. Mr. Casey, you, you, uh, you say we're at the hearings, and this, as I say, we're, we're hearing uh, this will also be excluded from the legislation tomorrow. And I know you're in a bit of a tricky position because you're uh, not really here to talk about the bill until we see it. but. I, I took an oath not to. Yeah, well, and, and, but maybe give me, give me the context in, in this kind of discussion. The, the government was, uh, basically the challenge before your government was to implement the decision of the Supreme Court of Canada, not necessarily the recommendations of the, of the Parliamentary Committee. Uh, but you created the committee uh, for that purpose. So uh, tell me about the balance there. If you end up having to ignore some of the things uh, that the committee proposes, uh, what was the benefit of that committee? The benefit of the committee was to hear from 61 witnesses, uh, to review uh, 100 or so briefs, and to um, fairly weigh and assess the various opinions and, and options. Um, every single piece of advice that was given to the government was of value and had to be weighed in the course of arriving at, uh, at a final bill. Um, and that was the that was the role of the committee. Indeed, that's the role of parliamentarians. So, uh, in look, the the committee, I, I think, were pretty clear in their in the report, and, uh, and I don't think that there's any question that the decision in Carter 
represented uh, the, the declaration of the court on those facts. The committee went well beyond the, the, the strict facts in Carter to look at the, to, to look at the issues in a broader context, and it, it, it was and will be of significant value in what you see tomorrow. And Mr. Cooper, do you believe that by, if some of the key recommendations of the committee, and we've already talked about a couple are, uh, that you, you support actually, the, the exclusion of, um, if some of those key recommendations from the committee are not part of this legislation, uh, do you believe the government can still fulfill the demands of the Supreme Court? If they are, or they aren't in the legislation. I didn't hear the last part of your question. Well, the, 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 some of the things you've objected to uh, in, in the majority report may not, in fact, make it into this government piece of legislation. We'll see tomorrow. Yeah. Do, you, do you believe, by even if they're excluded, the government still fulfills fulfills its obligations to meet the demands of the Supreme Court? Well, I think that if the government adopts the recommendations that are contained in the dissenting report, the government will be following the Supreme Court decision in Carter. Uh, the committee, in its uh, main report, went beyond the scope of Carter. So I'm going to uh, look very carefully at the legislation uh, in its entirety, uh, consult with my constituents and ultimately make a decision. And our leader, Ron Ambrose, has been clear in saying this is a sensitive issue, it's a complicated issue, and uh, members need time to uh, reflect on the legislation, engage their constituents, and look to their conscience in ultimately casting a vote. Mr. Rankin, some are already suggesting that some people will be happy with these measures uh, when they're announced tomorrow, some people won't. And some are suggesting as soon as the uh, the bill is passed by the House uh, into law. It should immediately be tested before the Supreme Court uh, to get a, a reference from the court to see if it will stand a chartered test. Do you think that's a good idea before people start taking it on themselves in the court? I think it's one of the many ideas that are swirling around as we try to do uh, in a nonpartisan way what we can for Canadians. You know, we had two women fundamentally that were the plaintiffs in this case, Ms. Carter, Ms. Taylor, and it was about those two people. Of course, as you'd expect, Parliament had to look at that Supreme Court decision and legislate for all Canadians. That's why we had a number of recommendations to deal with issues that didn't have to be addressed in the court case. I'm hoping we can get the right balance going forward and we'll look at the bill tomorrow and see if it achieves that. Palliative care was another big thing. The government has done nothing in the budget on that. We'll be looking to see whether there's any commitment to palliative care funding. That'll be another thing we'll be looking for tomorrow, Peter. Okay, Mr. Casey, would the do you think be open to uh, having this tested before the Supreme Court uh, since uh, it's, it's not unreasonable, I think, to assume that uh, people on both sides of this debate uh, may not be entirely satisfied when they see the details in the bill tomorrow? I guess what I would say is this bill will be a response to a Supreme Court decision. And I, I, without seeing the bill, I think it's quite premature to to say that uh, the bill is going to raise further questions that need to be addressed. Look, the, the, the very purpose of the bill is to address the questions that have already been raised and answered. It's not to raise new questions for the court. So I, I agree that there's been some discussion around the possibility of a reference to the court. Uh, I think those discussions are premature, uh, certainly until we've, uh, until we've seen the bill. And even once we've seen the bill, I'm not so sure that it would be appropriate, given that the very reason for the bill in the first place was a court decision. Okay, Mr. Cooper, what's your view on that? Well, I would concur uh, with Mr. Casey that it would uh, be premature at this point in time. Uh, I, I am uh, encouraged uh, overall to see that uh, perhaps if the reports are accurate, uh, some of the issues that were raised uh, in the dissenting report uh, will be reflected in the legislation. Uh, that's certainly consistent with what the Supreme Court provided in its decision, and I also believe where the vast majority of Canadians are on this issue. Okay, just to quickly to both of you, kind of a, or all of you, to finish up here, a double-barrel question. Mr. Rankin, I'll start with you. No. Uh, is there enough time to deal with this bill and, and talk about it at committee and get it passed before June 6th? And will it be, I'm assuming, I think it is already declared a free vote for New Democrats, but maybe you can tell me on that. Yes, uh, I think there is enough time. We've worked really assiduously at the committee that, that addressed the physician-assisted dying issue initially. It'll go to the Justice Committee. I'm confident that we can get it through the both houses by the June 6th deadline. And yes, it'll be a free vote for the New Democratic Party. Mr. Casey, timeline and free vote? 
uh, I agree with respect to the timeline. Uh, even though there were differing points of view at the committee, the committee worked very well together. I think that every parliamentarian, every parliamentarian real, realizes the sensitivity of this, the urgency of this, and that there, there will be a collective will to meet the deadline. There's been no decision taken yet as to whether or not it will be a free vote. Okay, uh, Mr. Cooper, finish with you. Your leader said today it will be a free vote, and do you think you can get all the work done between now and June 6th? It's a, a very compressed timeline. It is absolutely imperative and absolutely essential that Parliament pass legislation by June 6, by the time that the stay on the de declaration of constitutional invalidity expires. I think it would be very unlikely that the Supreme Court would grant an extension, and uh, having no legislation in place by that time uh, would be untenable uh, for, for patients, for uh, physicians, um, and for the vulnerable. All right, uh, gentlemen, appreciate your uh, perspective this evening on the eve of seeing this bill, and I know we'll be able to catch up for you again when we actually get the nuts and bolts of it. Thank you. Right, thanks, Peter. Thank, Thank you. you.